Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Ellie and today we're going to be dabbling in the world of Celtic knots. I've always been really fascinated by the ways that these knots are just two-dimensional on a piece of paper and yet they look like they weave over and under each other in really complex, beautiful, often symmetrical ways. And so today I'm going to be walking you through a couple of easy ways to start drawing your own knots. And let's get started. The basic concept of having one or more lines weave through each other in an over-under pattern is surprisingly easy to achieve. To try it out, we're going to make some scribble knots. No matter how many lines or loops, what shapes we draw, or how they overlap, we can make our scribble weave regularly over and under as long as we follow one guideline. Keep any loose ends on the outside of the knot. On a blank page with a pencil, lightly draw some loose scribbles. You want lines to cross in multiple places, but it will be easier if your lines are not too cramped on the page. Finish your scribble by joining the end of your line to the beginning or making sure both ends are outside of the scribble. There are two common ways to create the over-under effect when drawing Celtic knots. The first and easiest is to use a single thick line with a marker to represent your line. In this case, going over at an intersection involves drawing your line straight through the intersection, while going under means stopping short of the intersection and leaving a gap for the overline. You can see as I do this here that it does create the impression of one line going over and under the other one. The second way, more often seen in fancier knots, is to use two parallel lines to draw your line as a tube. In this case, going over at an intersection also involves drawing both edges straight through, while going under involves stopping short of the intersection to leave space for the over. Again, we will alternate going over and then under at each successive uh, intersection until we reach where we started or until we reach the end of our line. In this case, because I drew two loops, after I have finished the first loop, I need to pick a spot where I can already tell that the line goes under, start there, and draw as usual. The next one will be over and carry on until uh, you've drawn all overs and unders for all lines or loops that you created. And there you have it, two different ways to create the effect of lines overlapping. Feel free to pick whichever one you like better for all of the exercises in this video. I will use the first option for the rest of the things in this video just because it's easier. Notice the line ending inside this third scribble. Over, under, uh-oh, under again. And that is the only way to break one of these scribble knots is to leave an end inside the knot. As long as you join the ends or make sure they're both outside, you should be fine. Erase any messy pencil lines and you're done. Now that you've got the hang of scribble knots, go ahead and try some variations. Make a more complex scribble. Try using multiple lines or loops. Do all of your scribbles in the shape of a picture frame or a triangle or a heart like I'm doing. The more you play with this, the better you'll get at drawing the lines and understanding the pattern. Have fun! Now that you're comfortable drawing scribble knots, I'm going to show you how to use some basic shapes as frameworks to make knots that look organized or symmetrical. Draw your shapes lightly in pencil because we will erase them later. I'm going to show you two easy examples and one slightly more complex example made up of multiple shapes put together. 
Now go ahead and draw an X in the middle of each side of each shape. Ideally, you want all of the sides of your shape to be about the same length. This just helps with the spacing of your knot. If you have lines which are much longer than the other lines in your framework, like the sides of the rectangle, you can divide them into two and put two X's along them instead of just one in the center. Now, just like before, we are going to draw a pencil line for the shape of our knot, but we're going to use the X's we've drawn to guide where these lines go. Each X is going to be an intersection in our knot. So start at any X and follow the direction of one of the lines making it up until you hit uh, another X and connect them, or if you're heading outwards away from the shape, curve your line around the shape until you reach another X. Continue this process until you've used all of the lines in all of your X's and you should have a nice line shape for your knot. Now if you are going away from your shape and you have to curve around a very sharp corner like on the triangle you can uh, add a corner to your line there's no reason that your lines just have to be smooth curves this is a stylistic choice so it's up to you but i'm going to go ahead and show it here this process does get slightly more confusing as you make your framework shapes more complex but with practice, you should be able to puzzle out where each line needs to go next. On the more complex framework, I stopped after drawing my first two loops because I liked how it looked. But you will notice that there are still some intersections where I could have drawn another loop and gotten a slightly different look. So that is up to you whether you complete every single intersection when you're drawing your knot lines. The final step is just like in project one, finishing your lines with your preferred method. Be careful to only draw over the knot lines rather than the lines of the framework shapes underneath, but by this time you should be pretty professional feeling. So just go ahead and finish your knots. Now that you have the basic concept, go ahead and try some variations again. Uh, you can put together as many shapes as you want, but remember that it helps if all the line segments are about the same length. If you have a longer line, you can draw multiple X's on it as if it were several shorter lines. If you put together a framework that you like the shape of, you'll probably like the shape of the knot it creates. Go crazy. Well, I hope this video gave you a little bit of confidence so that you can go dabble in these knots yourself. Have fun, and I'll be back next week with part two for some even more complicated knots.